sympathy, but certainly if he's going either. <laughs> yeah, it's Douglas Ross empty. Oh, yeah, that's a good one for yeah. the collection. Oh, yeah. It's in a style that will be universally popular. I used to think that Mona Lot was a fictional character, but it turns out it's actually the First Minister of Scotland. In the name of Stephen Kerr, a potato with more vitamin C than a lemon. I am not a potato. Good evening and uh, welcome to I. Right, uh, yeah, in a week where uh, Therese Coffey was telling us that we should no longer be pandering for uh, and chasing after exotic European vegetables, but instead we should be getting uh, more attached to the homegrown vegetables. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that one was a wee bit difficult to swallow. Uh, but yeah, we did ask uh, Stephen Flynn for a comment on this, and Stephen said. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what that was, was uh, yeah, well, what, what that is, Stephen, is it's a, 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 a Tory Tomshi, which is a homegrown turnip of, a, I, I believe it's a very toxic variety, but also joining us this week, personally we've got from our old stalwart, uh, the poet and comedian, Mr Sean Moore, how are you doing, Sean? Good evening, Graham. <laughs> Hi, Hi, good Sean. to see you. Good to see you back, Jem, as well. Oh, it's wonderful to see you. I missed you guys so much. I do know what that... Um, that, that yeah, that, Sean. That, that, that turn up picture of coffee. She's actually never looked better. <laughs> I thought it was like, where did, where did Graham get that photo of me when I was looking really bad? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, you've been out and about this week, I believe, chasing the Northern Lights. I'll say, you'll say the Aurora, Aurora Borealis or whatever it is. I can never say it right. Aye, aye, that's aye. We get, we get folk say, say from, here from, um, from all over, don't we? We get folk tuning in from all over Scotland. And uh, I'm, I'm just wondering uh, if folk uh, have, have caught a, a sight of that Aurora Borealis on Monday, Sunday, Sunday into Monday. Um, aye, it was groovy. I missed I missed the first night, the best night. I was I was actually working, but the next night we went out and she's mom will go and try and catch something. And uh I we went, we went up the um up the back of Greenock for folk at Nori area. There's a couple of lovely big vistas uh, coming down the hill into Greenock. And um I it was really, really busy and so, so I pulled into this cemetery which overlooks the Clyde and overlooks the Kilpatrick Hills and all that. Lovely. Um uh, pitch black though. And there was a wee bit of activity. There's cars coming and going and coming and going. And that's this boy pulls up beside this winds of windy down and he's like, what's happening, mate? I says, this, it's the body Alice. My, obviously, this guy hadn't help. It was, all right. And he's still looking confused. I says to him, are, are you here for the dogging? Because cause that's tomorrow night. That's Tuesday night usually, man. And his wee face went, no, I'm, I'm, I've got some relatives on here. I was just down to check. <laughs> Why then? <laughs> Aye. Uh, uh, dog. He must have been the only person that wasn't doing social media that wasn't seeing all these Northern Lights photos. Good evening, Colin McDonald. Good to see you again, my man. Uh, do Dogging was one of Dogging was one of those ones that used to always get me. I I, I couldn't figure it out because dogging to me was when you didn't go to school. Uh, and then people kept talking about dog, and eventually I had to ask the missus what it was. I was embarrassed, and she's lying to me. I don't know what it is either. So we had to go in and uh, had to go a wee bit easier. But listen, Sean, uh, we've got somebody else back with us who was dogging last week. <laughs> oh, you mean in the old sense of the word? Somebody was know, dogging you know. last week. Well, yes, of, of course, I mean in the old sense of the word. Yeah, I we've got Jim Brannigan back with us. Uh, oh, I missed you guys. Yeah, what well, have you been up to? Have you been doing a wee bit of live streaming, I believe? Um, yeah, there was actually um, there was a Scottish pensioners event in Glasgow that uh, we live streamed. We got quite a few live streamers, and uh, there was a torch lit one that they did uh, for, for in, in uh, Edinburgh with uh, Leslie Widock. 
And uh, yeah, there was an event in uh, Roseland, which was a historical event that was quite interesting, although the castle's actually uh, blocked off for repairs. So you can't go in, you can't right. go into it. It's all blocked off. But uh, That's, uh, I take, I take okay. it a fair bit of money after all that. Remember the movies and the, the, the books that was made there a few years ago? Um, there was it the yeah, was, and, and then people were coming from all over the world. To it visit. was Da Vinci, Da Vinci Code, wasn't it? Da Vinci, aye, Da Vinci Code, aye, aye. I take it they got a fair bit of re recompense for that, so yeah, fair, it was an interesting, interesting event, and um, it was well attended. It was nice people, and uh, I think the Piper was wearing an outfit from the 1600s or something. It was incredible. He had like that it was just I bet you that's I was I was just I was just thinking of that thing in Scotland where people wander about in bands playing music for the sixteen hundreds, but that's a different thing or right, another man. Good evening, good evening, George, good evening, <laughs> Jock Thompson. Good to see you back, boys. Right, let's let's crack on here. We'll start off with Dory the Week. Okay then, Sean, you go to last week, so I think we'll uh, let Jem choose the magic door this week. What door would you like to go through this week, Jem? Oh, I got to choose the door of the week. I'm so excited. Okay. If Jen's, um, if Jen's yeah. an anti-dogging, she should be taking the back door. I refuse to talk about this, and I don't know what it means, so we just got to move on. Well, what door did you move choose on, last week? On. What door move did on. you choose last week? Number one. Okay, so can I choose door number three? Door number three. Let's see what's behind Since door September, number three. September, the lack of interest in finding answers to who was behind the Nord Stream gas explosion has been, frankly, astounding. This was an act of sabotage, an act of unrivaled va vandalism, economically and environmentally, and not a word, no discussion, no questions. Then along comes Seymour Hirsch, the world's most acclaimed, distinguished, living investigative journalist. He produces a detailed claim that the United States executed this explosion with the help of Norway. Planned months before the invasion, a Norwegian Navy P-8 surveillance plane dropped a sonar buoy on the 26th of September, which triggered explosions planted by U.S. Navy Panama City divers three months earlier under a NATO exercise, and still nothing. I don't know what happened, but I want to know. This is a man who doesn't make claims lightly, a man with contacts, and I find it frankly jaw-dropping that the EU is not asking questions as to who is responsible for sabotaging the livelihoods of our citizens. I am ashamed to be a European. Yeah, this is uh, the Irish MEP Claire Daly. I love the way she takes her real leprechaun into the parliament, you know. But, uh, yeah, you know, and about the, the bombing of the German Russian uh, pipeline. Uh, she's not a the type of woman you would show up with. Aye, the wee guy. I know he's sat, but it looks like a leprechaun when he's sitting down. That's Mike, that's Mike Wallace, aye. He's a dangerous and all man, he's aye. Aye, they're, they're a good double act to do. Aye, he's quite lethal. Aye. aye. Uh, you know, I have a deal. Is in the and rooted with the suits and the ties, and the two of them are just straight out of the pub and into the into the session, you know. Uh, but yeah, so Sean, what do you think about this? And we'll come to you first. Seymour Hirsch, uh, uh, as she said, an acclaimed uh, journalist has said that America blew up this pipeline. Uh, yeah, any thoughts on this one, Sean? Uh, put, put, put more. I wonder. I wonder how long it is before the day of Julian Assange and him or a or uh, um, what, was, what was the doctor that the British bumped off as well um, just before he ended the render man? Oh, oh, aye, aye. Aye. Um, seeking the truth. It's, it's really, really worrying, but 
and she's saying, why why did the EU not do anything about it? Because, wow, well, that's the world's biggest terrorist organisation flexing their muscles again. The Americans, you know, were, uh, while we're all busy laughing at Biden, then he's, he's uh, getting mixed up with his words and, and we're still laughing at Trump. Uh, all the suits behind the scenes are still working away. All the guys that overthrew democracies all over the world are still working away. And um, what was it? I the, the, the Nord Stream, it was owned by Germany and, and Norway. Um, Norway, a bloody rich country with a lot of clout um, financially. Germany, um, the, the biggest power in Europe. Everybody in the, the rest of the EU is, oh, Germany's too powerful. We're the big guys. <laughs> but when America says, right, you two, you are just a couple of pawns and you are going to take this. Given Germany an absolute dilemma, um, they've damaged our pipeline, but we, are we going to get fuel from Russia, but we're expected to make sanctions against Russia? What do we do? They just went, no, just, just take it, man, uh, the Americans. Um, it just shows, um, no matter how powerful the EU or Germany or anybody thinks they are, um, when these big boys start flexing their muscles, or just pawns, just pawns, crazy. Jen, what do you think about it? Have you got any thoughts on this one? Do you think uh, Americans? Are- I think it's such like it's such a big question, and it's such a valid question. And she's it was so well spoken, you know, just just bringing bringing this up and saying, well, you know, this happened a while ago. And where's the answers, you know? We're talking about uh, where's, where's, where's confessions, where's motives, all sorts of things, you know? Uh, I think it's, it's vital what, what, what happened, you know? It can't just be dropped and faded into the background, like so many things. Well, I think it's like it. But you, but you were uh, talking about motive. Let's see if America had a motive. This is five years ago, way before uh, the But war. this is one of the few instruments that we have. To, over the long run, you simply want to change the structure of energy dependence. You want to depend more on the North American energy platform, the tremendous bounty of oil and gas that we're finding in North America. You want to have pipelines that don't go through Ukraine and Russia. Uh, for years, we've tried to get the Europeans to be interested in different pipeline routes. It's time to do that. And so some of this is simply acting and acting as quickly as possible. Classic. Would you make of that one then, guys? On you, Sean. Just before we go into that, um, there's a couple of comments just came in. Hello, good evening, Chris. Good evening, Linda. Good evening, George McBud. But there's a couple of comments about the feed being a bit slow. I'm not sure if you get in on the, the dashboard that you could do with that, guys. Well, it looks like everything's in order, so it can be individual internet it's uh, maybe just it's maybe just that these guys are watching it on a different platform then okay okay yeah thanks for that um yeah. so yeah if you are if you are picking us up loud and clear guys um drop the drop the comments and let us know me youtube feed that's what we're getting so it looks like maybe folk are getting us on facebook but not youtube um, i don't know it looks all right, ah, right maybe i so... Right. Colin McDonald says we he can't get us in oh. YouTube. A couple of other guys have said um, that there's an abs, there's a, there's a bit of a delay. Maybe maybe it's worth tuning in on Facebook, guys, then and leaving YouTube till later for the catch up. <laughs> Scott the very man is homed right on in the problem. It's no your uh, control dashboard there, Graham. It's the Illuminati. They're freaking aye aye aye. They're, they're blocking my signals or something like that. <laughs> They're at it again. Stop. It's probably the CIA Stop. because we're, we're talking about the mainline. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so that was Condoleezza Rice showing that, showing that the Americans uh, had a wee if to do that. But uh, I think a confession would be quite nice as well. So uh, here's Joe Biden talking to the German press, uh, uh, I think, last well, year, actually, Russian two years ago. Uh, that means... Tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the the border of Ukraine uh, again. Then uh, there will be uh, we there will be no longer a Nord Stream two. We we will bring an end to it. What do, what how will you how will you do that exactly? Since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control, we will. Uh, 
I promise you we'll be able to do it. Well, that's something. You, you know, when you're bringing up these clips, it's really interesting because it's over different time frames and it all ties up together, doesn't it? Aye, aye. And it's, 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 well, it's, uh, well. it's, it's like we, we told you we were going to do it. We've been totally open about it. Um, we're making a threat. Basically, we're making a threat. We will carry this out. Um, quite quite scary, and, and the arrogance that, 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 that they can do that because they're above the law. Yeah, I think it's Joe, all Joe like Thompson for the CIA is listening. <laughs> yeah, Somebody and anyway, something. so but obviously, it's, I mean, obviously, it's a major terrorist incident. So, how do you think the American media would react to this one then? Let me show you how the American media that? acted to it when. They, when the, the news broke, this here hour, we go. Dramatic new details about the unidentified object shot down by fighter jets just miles off the coast of Alaska yesterday. Unlike the Chinese spy balloon shot down last Saturday, this object demanded more immediate action yesterday. There you go. UFOs. Let's, don't look over there. Look over there. Yeah. Uh, and they never, they never said the brilliant thing was they, they, they left the fly in it because they didn't want to make it. They must have been told, we'll use you UFO, we have got unidentified objects. They left out the fly in bit so that they didn't have to say UFOs. But I thought that was quite, that was it, that, that was the day after. <laughs> that was the day after. Uh, Seymour Hersh had, had done his article exposing them. America, the people who blew the pipeline, Uf UFOs started flying, or Chinese balloons, and UFOs started flying across America. Any comments on that? Uh, we'll come to you first with you. Are you is it a slam dunk that the, the Yanks did it then for you, or are you, uh, have you got another wee theory going there? I think it always goes straight to like distraction, doesn't it? Like introduce some new topic, like let it fade into the background. Yeah. Um, I think from the clips that you you picked out, it kind of seems pretty clear that it was them. You know, uh, who can judge? But you know, everybody's got their suspicions. But with all these, any event that happens that just gets shoved into the background. It's somebody's got to bring it back up and say, listen, what actually happened there? Because this was important. This was actually a big incident. That's my opinion. I just like to say, if the CIA are listening in, I didn't see America did it, Jim did. John, which you? Oh, no, I, I said from the clip that you selected. <laughs> Where are you in this one, Sean? Do you know it's 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 tried and tested. It's been working for generations, isn't it? Um, when I mean, when you were wee, you would see the the reruns of the Outer Limits and the Twilight Zone and all that. And these things were pumped out in the fifties and sixties when there was like a rash of UFO sightings. Um, right at the height of the Cold War, when the Bay yeah. of Pigs was happening and all that. Um, Aye. And 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 that, and that continued through, and then obviously Reagan, Thatcher era with Gorbachev before the wall came over. It was a Cold War. Um, it, it, it's it's always worked, and it, it, what a deflection, man! In Britain, the supermarkets are empty. In in America, there's all sorts going on, man. It's the, the place is a powder keg. Um, the, the whole world's in meltdown. The right is rising, uh, but still they can say. Here, never mind what's happening at home. Look at there's these bogeymen up there wanting to get you. You know, you really need a powerful, you need a powerful government to to protect you. I mean, that, that Condoleezza Rice, she was uh, she was the head of was it the, the, the Hoover Institution in America, um, the, the, the FBI um, kind of think tank and the FBI headquarters, where it was all about national security at any cost. And again, when things are when, when people are looking outwards and they they start to question human rights and international relations, but then they'll say, no, 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 but there's this big bogeyman, there's this big scary unknown quantity. You need to hand control to your government and no ask any questions and let your government deal with it. Sean's gone. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Independence Live saying it was Sturgeon's fault. <laughs> uh, but 
Pues a mí me So that I'm noticing a wee bit at the top of the uh, page just maybe seems to be saying we've got a problem with uh, uh, the signal, yeah, going out. Uh, but I've certainly got a strong here and there. Flash now. Anyway, I so we'll, we'll leave that. Very oh, very you know the. Scott the very man's got Ratty. a friendly suggestion. Can we crowdfund? Can we bring that one up, Jim? Can we bring that one up, Jim? Scott the very man. Can we crowd? What's that? I was wondering if we could bring up Scott's comment. Can we crowdfund a balloon fight for Dougie Ross over Alaska? <laughs> I always love the comments, the class, you know. People got such good comments. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Ross has just replied. He I said, think, I think, yeah. sick. <laughs> sick. <laughs> good evening, I think a wee, I think a wee balloon fight over. <laughs> a wee balloon fight over Easterhouse. That would be quite, that would be quite good. Anywhere we could watch that. Anywhere. Right. So we're going to move on, guys, and we're going to uh, let's go into the Brassels, our awards. Okay, off. The Brassels. I'm put the clip hold on. I'll put the wee uh, uh, the Brassels, yeah. So, yeah, as you can see, we've already got one nomination in from last week and our nomination for the Brassel this week. I'll just put it up for you. Uh, here we go. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the bull boy. What's the yeah, name? The bull name boy, again? Douglas Ross. Uh, uh, Dougie, Dougie Dross. At last last week's prime minute, uh, first, first minister, Scotland, Dougie had, uh, there's Pete Scallion. Last week's uh, first minister's questions, Dougie was wearing a badge supporting uh, LBG plus uh, community and, and a, a soul tyre. Uh, obviously in the back of the cave, uh, Kate Forbes fiasco. Uh, yeah, the brass neck of the guy. Uh, Jen, let's come to you for a comment on we doggy supporting the, the gay community all of a sudden. Well, it seems like it's just topical, you know. Is this something that he always supported? Or is he jumping on the bandwagon? You know? But that's just political satire. Right. Sean, what about you then? Peace. Uh, I'm just reading the comments here, man. Pete Scally, Dallas sounds like Norman Collier. <laughs> it's an improvement. Right, I'm obviously cutting off quite a bit. Uh, it usually sounds like Norman Wisdom, so we'll take that. I think that's pretty cool, man. Aye, sorry. Um, <laughs> Independence Live, that wee punts get more front than Brighton. Aye, total brass neck. I mean, he's, he's still a Tory. He's still a, the, the, the branch manager. Uh, at a Tory party in Scotland, the, the party um, that, yeah, okay, with the Drift Davidson and all that, flying the, the rainbow flag, but still the party that um, introduced Section 28 and defended Section 28 to the hill. Uh, and they're, they're still, that's their voter base. There might be these bright, new, shiny, tolerant, um, inclusive uh, Tory party members. Uh, on the front of the camera and stuff like that, but their voter base is still the old bigoted gammon um, that, 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 that don't agree with us, man. But <laughs> do you know, usually, usually, when, usually, if you were to say to me Douglas Ross in a badge, I would think of a rusty sheriff's badge. <laughs> what do you think of that kind of badge? Oh, a rusty sheriff's badge, aye. Don't, don't Google that, Jen. Oh, uh, the chocolate starfish. Um, do, do, do you remember in the 60s, there was those wee tea towel holders on the wall? It was like a uh, rubber thing. Uh, 
You shot me to die. Why can't I hang? I'm getting the um, idea. <laughs> but what? Um, <laughs> I Dallas is the Mormon Collier. Um, what was it? Maybe he's trying to work up the courage. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to drop, drop off. Good, good shout, good shout, Jock. Good shout, Jock. So I think um, I think Graham is probably rebooting. Um, I hope that's what's happened, man. And he's no uh, he's no been doing a rabbit hole looking uh, for rusty sheriff's badges and things like that online. Well, um, maybe he's looking for his own badge. So, hi <laughs> Douglas Ross, Jen, you were away last week when, um, when 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 we first came back, man. So how's how's your thoughts on the the kind of leadership thing? You missed out on that last week. Yeah, you know, I, I always think it's like, I don't trust any politicians. And uh, I grew up, I grew up like learning that, you know, the, it, you know, like it's all about speeches and it's it's about words and impressions. What we want to see is action. We want to right. see independence. You know, we can hear as many things as we want to. And people can, as many people can say things, they can, they can put us down. But at the end of the day, we want action, isn't it? That's that's it's my opinion. On, on the subject of the big issues, Graham. You, did you remember yeah. your 20 pence back on that ton of brass or once you used that? <laughs> I'll need to do that. I will. That, that's, that's controversial that's at the, the moment. Big, that's the biggest yeah, burning issue in Scotland today. Eh? Uh, uh, I'll tell you, Sean, I'm well pissed off if this doesn't go ahead. And Jim, because... I've got a house full of bottles and cans. I've been saving up for a year. I'm thinking, right, I'm going to be a here this time next year. I've got a room full of these yeah. bottles and cans thinking I'll be down there giving it 20p, 20p. Uh, so I uh, just think yeah. better go ahead now. Right, so that was the Brassos. We've got two nominations, right? It's, um, it's right, I'll go Right, I'll it's, go. it's like the big burning issue. It was always the big, the big macroeconomic question. What currency will you use, Scotland? Glass checks. That's what we're going to use. Next. <laughs> right, let's move on again. So we've got uh, Douglas Ross and we've got question time. If anybody's got any suggestions, donations for the Brassos, please fire them up and they'll be brought up. Glass checks are back. Right, here we go. Okay, so here's some that's been uh, ripping it this week. I'm just going to flick this up and see what you guys think about this. Well, but, but, but bear in mind, she way. says that independence will get her the money to sort the things out. No. You know, Scotland could do its own thing. No, Scotland, Scotland couldn't possibly exist on its own financially. I mean, at the moment, remember, it's very much dependent on money from Westminster. That's why she always was going on about... Tory Westminster austerity has put us in the position we're in, and yet she wants to be independent. But they get so much more money through the Barnet formula than English people. Okay. Well, that really rips wow. on the thing, eh? I mean, what an attitude, what a comment. It's just so. I think speechless with that one, eh? I mean, you'd have thought of, after all this time. You know that one was that one was gone, but it looks like they're coming back with the same old, old arguments. But uh, yeah, what did you make of that one then, Sean? Uh, you know, Graham, I'm kind of <laughs> that was a bit like last week's clip, wasn't it, man? It was just well, there's just this endless procession of uh, English gammon non entities that we don't even know telling us that that they know more about Scottish economics and uh, Scottish society and, and Scottish independence than. Uh, than we do, than the, than the SNP think tank do, than the, the lawyers do, man. Um, and again, <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's, it, they've not got anything else. They're still, they're still pr trotting out that, um, that, 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 that old argument. But there is, that, I mean, I've seen other ones. There was the, the Peter Arnold clip. Did you have that? Were you, did you have I, that? I, I, 
I think I've got that. Let me put well, Scotland is, is one of actually one of the wealthier parts of, of the country, really. So it, it benefits from, if you like, having a capital effect from via Edinburgh. Um, its economy is probably the third or fourth wealthiest part of, of the country behind London and the South East. So it does have that, again, that robustness from, from income and therefore has also a kind of a, a more mixed economy than perhaps the North East or Yorkshire and the Humber. And it's still got uh, sizable manufacturing, I guess, as well, and an oil services sector. Yes, and well. we, we have to remember that the oil and gas industry locally in the northeast of Scotland. Edinburgh has a strong financial services sector and, and digital and life science businesses in Scotland. So again, it has that balance across high value ads sectors, high value growth sectors that, that means it does, again, have those um, better performance in those areas. Yeah. Wow. And again, that's, that might be your, your, your both sides of the British media. You've got your, the, the first clip is your um, your daytime Jeremy Kyle style fodder, whip, whip the gammons up, tell them about who's the latest freaking danger. Who are we slanging this week? Is it immigrants or gays or Scottish people? Who is it? Um, just let them hear what they want to hear, whip them up, for the Brexiteers. And then occasionally you get the, 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 the sensible discussion where they have to admit the truth when somebody presents them with the facts, whether you get the occasional decent, real um, journalist like, like like Arnold or somebody like that. Um, who was it that took um, Jeremy Hunt to task last week? Andrew Marr. Andrew Marr occasionally will corner them with a question that, that, that they cannot deny. And But even in that, that it was still sugar-coated. Scotland's got the best economy after the South East and London. Right, economy, fine. Numbers, money, changing hands. That's all the South East and, and, uh, and London has got. OK, maybe the South East has got a bit of commerce from, uh, from Europe, what's left there. Um, but they don't have resources. They, 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 they have infrastructure, they have economy, but they don't have natural resources. Take away that financial sector and, and, and the, the, the European uh, links to the South East. They have nothing left. They have no fresh water. They have no minerals. They have no fuel. <laughs> and they have no renewables. Uh, my God, when are, when are the people in Scotland going to wake up and see this? Well, and well, I, I think, think there was... On about the financial... Didn't we bail them out of the tune of five hundred billion pounds? Do you know what I mean? That that that's uh, that's a bit twice the price of COVID. Aye, and I think it was. Uh, I think it was Pedro uh, on one of the the, the 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 comments just earlier on said, uh, "What about having to switch these wind farms off because we've got we've yes, got I saw that that we can't use while we're on fuel poverty." Is there maybe something up with that system? <laughs> that was a good question, actually. Well, it, there's nothing up with that system if you're a shareholder in, in uh, one of these big energy companies, you know. But yeah, uh, or, I know what you're or saying. The guy, you're saying. Or the guy that we had on a few weeks ago, Kyogo, sets up his, sets up his uh, own well, the, um, energy supply company, gives a million pounds to the Tories, and then bump breaks it in. Mr. Ovo. He's a top boy, aye. Aye, no, in fact, he owns uh, SSE as well now. He owns quite a few of them. He's done well for himself with that wee donation at the Tory party. It goes a long way. I sent a fiver doing a weeks ago. Still don't get any contracts. I'm not giving them any more money. That's done. Here's another wee account. Here's another wee a account. Fiver. That's, uh, that's about 200 glass checks. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here's another wee economist. Again, you're an international view of the Scottish economy. Because if the Scots leave Francine, they are going to take their oil. And you look at the UK's balance of trade, balance of payments. Without the oil, without the Scottish oil, what's left here, little England or Great Britain or Great England, whatever we'll call it then, doesn't have much to sell to the outside world anymore. And Wow. Don't think Jeremy Kyle would like him calling it Little England, would he? Oh, that wouldn't get in well. Aye. Well, my, my, Mr. Bloomberg just said a wee bit more technically and a bit more erudite, like um, what I was trying to say there. Yeah, they won't have anything else to sell. Um, aye, that was Bloomberg, the, the international view. Yeah. Um, what's some power of gifted gears to see ourselves as others see us? Waking up, eh? Yep. Isn't it such a difference yeah. from uh, the the first one? You know, where is it with the Jeremy Vine show? We're just telling us the totally wrong story. You know, I'm thinking 
if they're just going to get away with it, no one's going to question it. And now more accurate stuff is, is coming out, yeah, you know, it's yeah. good. Un unfortunately, it's, it's a, there's it's maybe only, I don't know, one or two percent of the electorate is watching that Bloomberg, has seen that Bloomberg um, transmission, or or the maybe five percent has seen the other one. But hey, fifty percent have maybe seen the Jeremy Green one, and that's the votes, isn't it, man? That's 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 your voter base. It just keeps keeps um, the con the confirmation bias. So looking at some of our um, look at some of the viewers. Uh, to get their take on these 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 wise people from Little England that know better than us, um, ignorant people with huge gums, mind your own business in GTF. Um, put that in music, Pete Scally. That's got a ring here. Uh, <laughs> John Thompson. I thought arses couldn't be shown on telly before the water shed. <laughs> Peter Duguid gets us to that old dilemma, <laughs> that that old uh, catch twenty two thing. You think the English folk would want rid of us, subsidised Scots? Aye, they don't realise what they no. say sometimes. Aye. Yes, Peter, do good. Um, London is nothing but a big call centre. Aye, take away that financial sector that, that's built on house of cards, man. It's just built on shifting sands, shifting money, like shifting sands. There's nothing concrete underneath it. Hey, I'm going to make a poem about that. Minerals, concrete. Aye, aye, aye. Sorry. Somebody called it the Jeremy, Jeremy Bile Show. show. Aye, that's good. I'm not sure what Linda's talking about, yeah, Am I missing something? What's that, Linda? Oh, yeah. don't freeze a leveling. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, again, it's, your, um, it's a story we're seeing all too commonly across Scotland just now since the last last year's um, local authority elections. The, uh, the amount of red and blue Tories getting into bed with each other just at any cost to keep the SNP mm -hmm. out. Um, towns that you maybe are kind of I'm not saying you would expect it, but towns that were borderline, they were maybe Tory strongholds for a long time, and, and uh, the, the, the Labour have um, quite happily kept them in power. Stirling, um, Dumfries, as Linda mentioned, uh, and the disgusting stuff that's going on up in North Lanarkshire, man. Uh, Henry Dunbar's heartland, uh, where, it's, where it's the orange Tories that are in bed with the blue Tories up there. Uh, no, the red Tories. Um, aye, it's, it's happening all over, and, and um, it, it's it's horrible. Um, they're just totally undermining uh, the, the the whole of the administration when it's leveling up money. It's a case of oh, Holyrood didn't give you any money, that bad SNP. Here we'll get you some money for this Tory leveling up fund because we're the good guys. Non-voters notice that. Totally undermining Holyrood. Step step one on this uh, process. I just shut down Holyrood. I think. You know, can I mention something? Um, you were saying that not that many people actually get to see the um the other versions, right? This Aye. is where it's really useful that when we find these things, uh, we can actually share them. We've got our um, I write page, and we've got um, we've got Twitter feeds and things, and we do make people aware of them because once they come out, it's important that people see them. So you can share them in those ways. Um, it is, it is, it is, it, sorry, it is important yeah. that people see these things, you know. Big time and fair, fair yeah, play, Graham. Well, <laughs> I just, I just, I just, we just turn up, <laughs> we just turn up the night and just start talking. Graham sits there all week, just plowing through all this media. And by God, uh, you must no. talk about ripping your mitten, Graham. Your head must be melting watching all this Tory and Brit propaganda. And he picks out the wee nuggets uh, for us on a Thursday night. So, aye, there's Graham taking one for the team, going through the pain barrier, man. Fair play to you. I, it's just, it's just I'm quite a sad person, really. You know, getting on bare today with my time these days. But, <laughs> listen, guys, that's been a good show this week. I think we'll crack on now, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you all again next week. And uh, Jim will be back to chairing next week. I think. Uh, She's booting me out the seat. So, uh, right. yeah. So, yeah. And we get to that. Be you and can, I, can I ask one question? I heard that a certain uh, person had uh, brought out some more music albums. I did. I brought another uh, album this week, in case you didn't notice. 
Uh, yeah, it's not going too well as normal, but hey ho, eleven. Uh, it, so uh, that'll be on your YouTube. You don't, you don't it'll be on your YouTube, YouTube channel and um, but Spotify. And uh, all? It's, it's on. Yeah, it's on YouTube, Bandcamp, Spotify. Uh, you name it, it's there. Uh, I don't well, know. Maybe we'll you, put these them up days on you don't the know right page. I listened to them and I yeah, thought well, they were brilliant. Uh, I, Oh, thank you very much, Jim. Tell everybody to buy it then, will you? No. Nah, I did, I did. It, it's the, oh, look, here yeah, we go. Yeah, Some, yeah, somebody I'm, said uh, Pepper Jock for president. <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't think that would work. Uh, I, 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 I tell you what, man. Been... No, I don't think that one would work. I, I don't mind. Like, I mean, I've got a lot of skeletons. and I don't mind. There's a lot of skeletons. Airlines in my car, and I don't mind the people knowing. Do you know what I mean? But they have all those investigations on you. <laughs> then the wife hang finds out of a, what you you know what you're really like. No, 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 I'm not doing that. <laughs> if um, that, it doesn't matter about the skeletons, as long as you're knowing the closet, that's, that's the main thing, man. Then Mary and all that will support you. You'll not get the same flack that we get to go. Uh, so long as you have a fridge to hide away in, you know. <laughs> and and yeah, well, Katie got a, was a, too. A big if Kate was too Christian for people, uh, then uh, maybe we could have a, a satanic rock and roller. That's that's kind of the pendulum swinging. <laughs> I'd vote for you, Graham. I'd, <laughs> you'd have my vote. I'm too old to get. I'm too old to get rock and roller these days. I, I like getting what? my bit. I, when I actually stopped gigging last last year because when I was coming back for gigs, I couldn't make it all the way home. I had a wee bit. Head in the back of the car, and I used to get a couple of hours up the road or an hour up the road and have to pull into a lay by and go for a sleep <laughs> halfway up the road. So, uh, I just <clears throat> enough of me. Well, you I so we're trying to just talking to my Linda. Linda's looking forward to getting the Pepper Jock CDs. So, it was a good question, Jen. There's obviously a, a hungry audience out there waiting for them. Yeah, well, I heard it and I thought it was really brilliant. So, I had to mention it. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm biased. Can can I ask, just oh, before we go, that's... looking at Linda's comment there, and I've seen a few wee comments, and they've got wee flags. Are they black flags, or is it just my computer acting a go? Or is Which... it wee black flags? Where? On the comments, on on, um, on Linda's comment there, there was wee black flags. No. And I noticed it in a, in a no, few they... other comments. No, Pete's... they're blue. Pete's is Pete's Pete's tired, Pete's right? Pete's cat. It's just computer. Pete Scarley's just put a computer, it's Pete put a comment up there to say that uh, he wants his CD for his new car while it's still working. Pete, you knowing your story with cars, mate, don't bother because you'll not be able to play the whole thing before your car stops working. Uh, Pete, Pete gets uh, he gets a hard time with cars. He always seems to get the one that's oh aye, aye. that works for a week. Is there a uh, well, we'll be a cassette this one was This one looks for me. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, see what Colin is saying about Black Flags on YouTube. I see sometimes on Twitter, if you try to include a cell tire in the um, hashtag, it'll just blank it out and put it as um, a black flag. So maybe it's a little bit oh, of censorship is. here and there. Aye, aye, aye. And then um, get back to the glass <laughs> checks thing. <laughs> um, Melanie McCain mentioned that... Um, she said, oh, is it glass bottles? It's glass and uh, cans, and I think plastic as well. She says they've got a recycle scheme in Sweden, um, but it's plastic only. Um, so I, again, a lot of people have been agreeing that that's ideal. We want to, we want to pursue that Scandinavian model in, in so many ways, certainly environmental and social ways. We want to pursue that Scandinavian model, but it seems to be the way the Scottish government has went about it has been a bit ham-fisted. Um, I'm not too sure if it's the tail wagging the dog, as in the the, the Greens, the, the, they're, they're having to appease the Greens to get the Greens support to keep this majority um, and push things through that maybe the, 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 the Greens will. Um, it's the Greens pet projects at the expense of so much Scottish commerce and, and independent supporters. It's a bit messy. It's a bit Somebody messy. See, be, honest, see, be honest with you, know, do you know, see, be honest with 
Yeah, I, I think the scheme's fine. I think it'll work fine. When you hear the, the only people you ever hear on complaining about the scheme, I mean, this morning I was listening, they had an expert on telling you all about what was wrong with the scheme. And then it turned out the guy works for Innocent Gun. It's all people with an Aye. agenda. Do you know they're happy? They're happy to produce the stuff and put it in the cans and get the cans out. But they don't. They want us to. They don't want to deal with their own mess. You know. Uh, Aye, so I think it's a good game. game. I think it's just the media and the stories that have just you know just set about dismantling it and making it. It, it would have worked fine. They would have all had to sign up for it. Or oh, no sale in Scotland, and they would have all signed up for it. And six months down the line, it would be it be a great exactly. scheme because so, you'd be people would be going around the streets picking up the cans. Twenty pence a can. Right. You're not going to get a can lying in the street. You know what it was like when we were kids with um, a ginger bottle. Oh, oh, I I go and get nature. any ginger bottles. Oh. Sure, I heard somebody mm. talking about that. Full of and, isn't it in one of the countries people can actually at the train station they can pay for their fare with bottles wow, uh, like wow. plastic bottles yeah. and they actually get um if they collect enough and they put it in it actually gives them a fare. I that's cool. Know. That's good, man. That's good. And it's, and again it becomes second nature. It's just changing. It's just changing the mindset. Totally changing the mindset. Why are you um, laughing, Graham? I think I think also you've got a vested interest as well. Again, Graham's talking about people with uh, people with vested interests and agendas. I think you've got a wee vested interest in this, Graham. Because it means like when you're doing pub kicks, there's there's less likelihood of folk firing bottles and cans at you when you're performing. <laughs> uh, well, that doesn't no, that's it's... a fair point. I've had do you know something, Sean? I'm that old. I remember when I used to do gigs and all the punks were standing at the front spitting at you. You know? <laughs> anyway, oh, you can't be that I've old, Jim. Hey, right, so... Oh, I'm that old. I'm that old, Jim. Right, Get listen, we better go. How many bottles? How many bottles for a fair Edinburgh to Inverness? The way the Scott Rail fairs have gone, man. You need, to, you need to buy the ginger factory. Coming down. Jason Henderson has sent a wee picture of a... Jason Henderson has sent a wee picture of a tomato. Now, I'm not too sure, because I know all these millennials and Gen Zs, they, they send wee pictures of fruit, avocados <laughs> and zucchinis and all that, and it means other things. So I don't know... I don't know if, if Jason's just making a comment on the tomato situation just now, or whether it's some sort of... And you I think it's thing. something to do with um, the shortage of vegetables and stuff, the produce that we have in the shops. I sincerely hope it so. Was... I sincerely hope that's all it is, man. Yeah, it's a comment on... I Who think, was that? Was that Jason? Uh, all I can say to Jason yeah. is we, if he's got his wee tomato, we can set up a wee, uh, a wee turn up for the weekend if he's looking for something. Just leave it to us. We'll get him sorted out. <laughs> no, well, uh, all these... Yeah. Uh, oh, listen, anyway, so, right, guys, time to go. Time to go. So, uh, yeah, we'll see everybody next week, hopefully. And uh, we'll just take you talking about my music. This is a wee session that I, I came across that me and you did, Sean, uh, a few years ago now, anyway, in a dungeon somewhere in Glasgow. But anyway, so we'll oh. see you all next week. And this is me and Sean from a few years ago doing the jack. So bye, bye everybody. Bye bye everybody. Yeah, Have you'll a see him, week. Sean. You'll see him. Yeah, my wife sent me to the show to get some frozen chips. Simple little task I thought when I tumbled off my lap. I brought my back a little bit. I should have seen that part. I can't the chaps for that, push me right for that, I have to try, I have to try, I have to try, so put it back, I have to try, I have to try, I have to try, so put it back, hey, so let's try and show, go back and hold me by a shot. Size and a fitting like a toy. Just hold me a fresh one, that's a bit more 